Ladies and gentlemen, here we are in the LED light room. We're going to do an update on this room and talk about the nutrients that we use for the plants and something at the end of the video. So stick around. So let's take a look. So what we have here is the nutrients that I use for the crops and also we're adding something new to the crop this time. That's the TNB natural CO2 dis dispenser. But first let's start with the general hydroponics nutrients. Now I found this is works best for all the crops that I've used. I've tried many different uh, nutrients and I like this one best. You could add any different supplements from different companies after but this is what I start with. It comes in three parts, the floral, the micro and the bloom. Then after that I always add CalMag. I love it. It helps with the structure, cell structure, helps feed the microbes in the soil, everything like that. PK Boost also helps with everything and it will really densen up your buds near the end. I start that at week 3 of flower and I only use it at half strength. So here we have the TNB Naturals dispenser. I'm sure all of you will know what that is. For those of you who don't, it's a pretty smart invention. It releases CO2 into your grow room, which helps through all stages of growth for sure and buds, everything. I've used CO2 before, I haven't tried these canisters, but in the old days I used to have to buy a, it would be a big metal CO2 compressed canister, you'd have to buy a valve to release the CO2, and when it would run out you have to bring it to the store, it was a big pain, so this is a smart product, hopefully it works out well. It says it lasts for two weeks, I have one of them right now, we'll see what goes on. So on the back of these, it gives you the directions. I would suggest for beginners you follow exactly what it says. It helps. Uh, it's a good. So let's take a look. Yeah, like I said, I use a five gallon pot, so it's easy for me to calculate. And I feed this room by hand when I'm doing it. So I also use this. That's what I'll measure the nutrients in while before then add it into my five gallon pot bucket. So, as you can see, it tells you the basic application table, teaspoons per gallon, and you have it from seedling, mild veg, aggressive growth, transition to bloom, bloom to ripening, so I suggest you follow all that for sure. I'll give you a little example. If you're doing bloom to ripening in this five gallon bucket, on the bottom it says one tablespoon per gallon of this one, this one would be two tablespoons per gallon, the micro, and this one would be three tablespoons per gallon. So you'd put five, ten, fifteen tablespoons. CalMag is very important, it really helps a lot. Solves a lot of problems with deficiencies in your leaves and stuff like that. I would never not run that now that I have, which I've run for a long time, but when I first started, I didn't use that. And PK boost, that's a potassium phosphorus. You can check that out. Really important. And also, all I do is I take this pitcher, dip it in. Well, first of what I do is I fill this bucket up to the top, almost to the top, so it's a five gallon. Then I add pH down. I always get my water to about six. 6.0 is what I'm saying around there, but I do let it fluctuate up a little and down a little, but not much. At this point, I could do the pH by hand, but you do use a ppm meter and a pH meter for that. I have one in my another room. The one in this room isn't good, but I found something in my box. I want to show people who are more on a budget, and you can't get that. You can buy this at a anywhere, pretty much a pet store. It's for fish tanks, for swimming pools, for testing uh, vegetables, everything. It's a little uh, pH tester kit. I'm sure many of you have seen that. It's really simple to use. But you will definitely need yourself a PPM meter for sure. But inside this comes a... Uh, you get a little vial. You dip, you fill that with water, whatever your water source is. You shake this up. You add two drops in it. And then you compare what color your water is on the vial and you want to get it to where it says uh, 6, 
whatever you well wherever you want it. Here's the numbers on there actually. I haven't used this forever. But it'll show you down there. So you'll match your watercolor after you put the two drops in it, and it'll tell you where you are. So for those who can't afford a PPM meter or pH meter, that's a good way to start. You just uh, use that, then follow the instructions, and it should get you somewhere, you know? But that's uh, for beginners, or for if you just can't afford it. So that's what I use for that. Works well for me. And the only thing we're adding new is the TNB natural CO2 dispenser. So we'll see if there's a big difference or we'll, if we can tell. But it looks good. Smart invention. Really like it. Another thing also, how you, you start it off is, for sure there's two different kinds of uh, materials in here. One, and you have to add one liter of hot or warm water, shake it, and then uh, that's it. You take, what you do is you add one liter of hot water, open the top, add one liter of hot water, close the top, take the sticker off, put your finger on it, shake it, that will get the chemical started, and it will do the reaction to release the CO2. And what you want to do for sure to make sure with that also is you want to put it at the top level of your crop. So you want to have it right at the top of your canopy in front of an oscillating fan. And try not to put it right beside a carbon filter because the carbon filter might just suck it all up. So now we're on to the LED table here. It's looking pretty good everybody. I defoliated yesterday. The plants are loving it. That's for sure. Like I said, so what it is now, we're on week three, day one, or day two of week three. That's where we are. There's buds everywhere. It's hard to see with the light on right now. In the future, I'll do some videos with the lights off. You get to really see where all the buds are. There's tons that you can't see. But like I said, you can't really tell, but I defoliated quite a bit. It took quite a while. But yeah. There's lots of buds. Everything's starting. I'll try to zoom in on one here. There's crystals starting. Go a little closer there. Yeah. So. Yeah, like I said, we'll come back and do some videos with the lights off. But it'll get much more impressive during the next like three weeks from now. It'll be insane. Hopefully. The canopy's looking good. The lights are working good. We have a Grow Star 1200 S1200W. And there we have the Mars Reflector 144 series. I have two of those down there. And one thing I will say with these kind of lights many companies make them sorry it's hard to see with the brightness but in the middle there's cobs the cob lights under the cob lights the plants grow really well but it's very concentrated it's a small space maybe uh, one and a half feet by one and a half feet companies should always put the cob as far as they can to the end to make it spread out more that's just my opinion I'm not saying i know what i'm doing but that would definitely help out a bit and like I said, I did a lot of defoliating. You might not be able to tell. But once you defoliate, you want to go under your canopy and you want to look up and make sure light is coming through, penetrating through your canopy. And as you can see, there is light coming through. I definitely can do much more on the lower branches, but for now, I'm going to give the plants a break, give them a few days and check out what's going on. And I always do end up removing more leaves, what I find necessary, what's blocking the buds, as it goes on. I'll show you something else actually. Well down here, these are what I defoliated, these two bags. They're really heavy even and they're really compressed. They're probably like that's for sure a pound and a half. And this one's like two pounds. So that'd be like three and a half pounds. Here's another thing. Here's a mother plant of critical from Royal Queen Seeds that I'm not going to keep running but I didn't want to just get rid of her or kill her so I kept her I brought her in here she's not going to get as much light as she should but I I don't want to just throw her away I feel it's not right and I'll show you another thing I did with this plant when it was young I topped it super cropped it but when I super cropped it I split it so bad down the middle when it was young 
from here to here it was totally split and these were laying totally down both of these sides so I taped it up and it's totally healed in there I could take the tape off now but it healed all the way down to the bottom all the way through and it was totally split sorry for the bad camera angle but yeah I was really happy with that worked out well so people remember that you could always just uh, tape up your plant if you really split it in half let it heal up and you never know what will happen so that's critical from Royal Queen Seeds we'll put it in here and just see what happens like I said it's not going to get enough light but we'll do little updates on that and this room will keep doing updates on and like I said in a week or two there will be much more action going on in here I'll do some videos with the lights off but I'm really happy right now so I'm gonna stop this pause this video and show you another little thing I got going on for future product projects so hold on a second all right ladies and gentlemen here we are we're back in my 2x4 grow tent we're using the Mars Hydro TS 600 I'm gonna leave links in the description with a coupon code for everything all Mars Hydro products so what we have here is we have Barney's Farm Cookie Kush and the world famous granddaddy purple the original from ken estes let's check it out so i started these three days ago well I, they were germinated and then they were planted three days ago the cookie kush came out way faster and no problems at all which was amazing very happy and with the granddaddy purple it was a little slower to come out of the ground and also the seed was stuck on the top right there. Here's the seed top. Let me try to find it. Right over there. That was the seed. For those newer growers, sometimes when you plant your seed, when it comes out, the seed husk will stay attached to the top of the plant. So you have to do some kind of delicate surgery to squeeze it off without breaking the plant. And I got it off, so I'm very happy about that. By tomorrow, it will be totally popping out, looking great. These are two of my favorite strains. We're going to do some of these in the future. If people are interested in seeing that, let me know. But 100% germination rate, three days, everything's done. Happy about that. So that's a future project, project I want to show you guys. So I'm going to be doing these under the Mars Hydro TS 600. See how that works out. I've never done babies under these. All right, everybody. Thank you very much. Stay tuned for updates. Have a good day.